Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for waiting and welcome to the conference call on the half year results 2016 of SNS Bank, hosted by Maurice Oostendorp, CEO of SNS Bank. The analyst and investor presentation is available at the website of SNS Bank NV. At this moment, all participants are in listen only mode. After the pre presentation, there will be an opportunity to ask questions. I would like to hand over the conference to Maurice Oostendorp. Go ahead, please. Thank you. Um, good morning, and uh, thanks for calling in to our presentation on the uh, highlights first half 2016. Um, normally, we would do this together, Annemiek van Melik, CFO of SNS Bank, and myself. Annemiek enjoys maternity leave, and uh, she will return into her job in ju uh, during the course of September. So this morning, I will do the presentation um, uh, myself. Um, as you know, we are a people-oriented bank with a clear focus on human touch. And uh, during the first half of this year, we've seen several banking industry-specific awards underlining that ambition. And it has also con contributed to our overall increased customer satisfaction scores. Um, we've seen a social a successful start of our mortgage term monitoring service. Um, and we've made a further step towards a climate neutral balance sheet um, by 2030. Um, commercially, we've had a strong half year with um, um, increases on, uh, of new customers and an increase in our new mortgage production. Um, we've also seen a slight increase in the retail savings balances and despite the fact that the interest rates uh, are low, we, um, uh, we've observed a, a continued interest of Dutch clients to, um, to uh, keep their retail saving balances um, at, at, at the levels we've seen in the past. Um, we've had a net profit of 181 million. That profit has been negatively impacted by a swing of uh, 59 million in uh, unrealized results on uh, mortgages and related derivatives. We'll come back to that later. Um, but we've also seen in the first half of 2016 a very strong improvement of the quali credit quality of our retail mortgage portfolio. Um, this all led to an adjusted return on equity of 11.5%, which we um, um, appreciate as good and a strong core T1 ratio of 26.6% and a leverage ratio of 4.8. Um, we have a, um, um, a strategy which is um, aimed at uh, creating value for all our stakeholders. It's the concept of shared value um, and we've been successful in further uh, elaborating on that concept. And it, it enables us, in, in combination with the strong financial position we have, to, uh, to further strengthen our um, identity um, from a social perspective, uh, enhance the business operations by aiming for simplicity and efficiency, and further implement innovation as a smart ad adapter. A few words on uh, the optimization of shared value. Um, as a concept, we've spoken about this um, before, uh, but as it is such an important element of the way we want to um, um, execute our bank model, um, I would like to take two minutes to um, um, repeat it again. Um, we're striving for benefits for our customers. Uh, that's where we start in um, the way we uh, process our products from advice to um, bookings on the balance sheet and reporting to the European Central Bank. Um, and it's very important to realize that that customer's favor, uh, that the customer's approach is really the start of the way we look at our banking model. Um, we also want to take um, explicit, quantifiable, objective uh, parameters in terms of taking our responsibility for society and we want to offer a meaningful job for employees that work for the bank. 
Um, of course, we also uh, strive for a, a return for shareholders, but it's none of those individual uh, values that has the lead. We strive for the optimization of the shared value concept. Um, and that is very important um, because that explains to a very large extent um, why we do certain things. We focus on Dutch retail customers. We have four distinctive brands, ASM Bank, uh, BLG Bonen, Regio Bank and SNS. And we um, focus predominantly on three core products, mortgages, savings and payments. Next to that we offer um, investment funds, sustainable investment funds and insurance products. And we um, um, run the whole model on a single back office with a strong IT organization, so multi-brand single back office. Um, a few words on uh, uh, the different elements of our ambitions. <coughs> um, we've had a successful start of the mortgage term monitoring service since the introduction last year. We have uh, contacted more than 85 customers uh, to have a dialogue about their um, running mortgage. Is there a need to adjust? Is there a need to uh, change things? Um, if not, then of course nothing happens, but if there is a need, we, we offer the, the basis for the dialogue for that. We introduced a purchase protection insurance linked uh, linkage to our uh, debit card. Uh, the first one in the Netherlands this is typically a product linked to a credit card, but we've offered it uh, as a link to our debit card. And we've, uh, Regiobank, uh, expanded its financial services in smaller villages and communities by opening ATMs and service counters, which is clearly a need that we have observed in, um, in, in, uh, in the Netherlands. Um, we've ac actively participated in uh, different elements of financial education for individuals. Um, ASN Bank continued to promote its philosophy of sustainable banking and uh, BLG Bonen um, um, starts to, uh, has, has started to um, uh, introduce a step-by-step -step guide in the mortgage application process. Um, we announced uh, that um, we um, want to be a um, bank with a clear sustainability policy. Uh, we, we will adjust uh, the whole organization to the sustainability policy of ASN um, and we took further initiatives to reduce the carbon footprint of our mortgage loan portfolio by including the sustainable living theme in, in the customer mortgage advice interviews. Um, our balance sheet um, was um, climate neutral for 23% and we opened our first circular shop in uh, Zoetermeer. Um, and we intend to build all new shops based on these principles. Um, we can have good intentions, good ambitions, but the client needs to show that the client is satisfied. Um, we uh, measure that through the net promoter score. Uh, our objective, our aim is to have a positive net promoter score for all uh, different brands. Um, the weighted average is uh, minus nine, so we're not there yet, but especially for SNS and BLG Wonen, we do see a continued improvement of the still negative promoter score. ASN Bank uh, continued to be positive and Regio Bank um, stayed neutral. Um, we've seen a customer growth um, driven by the increase in current accounts and um, that market uh, in absolute terms um, was smaller than last year. Um, our market share in opening new current accounts stayed at a relatively high level of 25%. Um, and as a re result of that, we had a net growth of 30,000 um, new customers and 42,000 new current account customers. Um, retail mortgage, our most uh, important assets asset on the balance sheet, 
we uh, increased the retail mortgage production to uh, one and a half billion, which represents a growth of 67% compared to the first half of uh, last year. Uh, last first half last year, our production was 0.9 billion. Uh, second half, the production was 0.2. First half this year, 0.5, and we expect a further growth in the second half of this year. Um, as the market is still characterized by a large percentage of um, um, redemptions, um, we've just reached the level of a stable retail mortgage portfolio at 45 billion. Um, we do expect, as a result of continuous low interest rates, that the level of redemptions will stay high. Um, but during the course of second half this year, first half next year, we hope to reach the tipping point where new production is higher than the level of redemptions in order to see a further, a, a new growth of our total portfolio. Um, from a balance sheet perspective, that growth is important. Um, we'll come back to the liquidity of the bank later, but we are very liquid. We have quite some negative carry on the excess liquidity. Um, so an increase of the retail mortgage portfolio reduces the negative carry and uh, supports interest income. It's important to underline that we're not buying market share by being price leader. Um, we're absolutely a price follower. So it's very much a reflection of our increased commercial capabilities and our market positioning that has led to the increase of um, um, the retail mortgage portfolio production. Um, we, of course, continue to see strong competition from uh, pension funds and insurance companies. Their uh, home turf, so to say, is long maturities, 15, 20 years. Um, and um, if a client has a strong preference for those maturities over five, 10 years, uh, we also offer as an intermediate uh, company uh, the, 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 the mortgage products of uh, insurance companies. Um, so if we all take that into consideration, we are very pleased with the growth of market share, the continuous growth of market share in the retail mortgage production. Um, <clears throat> retail saving balances increased, um, not much, uh, but um, uh, 0.8 billion to 37.7. Um, market share stable. Two messages here. Um, we do see um, a stable to slight increase of the retail saving balances in the market, despite the fact that the interest rates are at historically low levels and our market share is uh, stable above the long-term target we have of 10%. So we're very pleased with our performance on the saving side as well. So the two core product products, balance sheet products, retail mortgages and retail savings, I would say strong performance in the first half of the year. Um, of course, the characteristics of the market um, had an impact on um, uh, the results. Um, the net result is 26% lower, um, despite the fact that the first half of 2015 was a very good first half year in terms of uh, margins. Um, we still believe that this uh, result is uh, a good result, especially if we look at the adjusted return on equity of 11.5%, um, but also non-adjusted to 10.8% is a robust return on equity. Um, the adjustment um, comes from um, the fair value movement of a part of our mortgage portfolio and related derivatives. Um, we take it as it comes. Um, we don't like those fair value movements because it's um, a, a, a fair value movement derived from only a part of our mortgage portfolio. Um, we want to 
change the accounting methodology of this uh, portfolio and we will do this at the moment of the introduction of IFRS 9 and as from then on we won't have those fair value movements any longer which also underlines our objective to uh, stay away of um, uh, one of items as much as possible we want to be a predictable um, stable retail bank with um, um, assets, um, retail assets on, on, the, on the left side and, and retail liabilities on, on the right side of the balance sheet with a very predictable um, trend in terms of uh, um, interest rate, net interest uh, margin. Um, and we don't want to focus on one-offs. As, as far as we have them, we take them as business as usual. However, the, the mark-to-market -market performance of the DBV portfolio is still one that we have to uh, to uh, mention, especially as the swing of 59 million net was quite substantial. Um, if we take one level um, uh, deeper, dive one level deeper into the PL, um, we do see the net interest income um, um, reducing by 8%. This is completely in line with our budget. Um, we've um, um, assumed the impact of the low interest environment um, to also impact the overall interest income of the mortgage portfolio, um, but also the way we, we offer um, the opportunity to our clients to uh, enter into a new interest rate period at lower levels, um, if and when that is in the interest of the client. Um, that has an impact on the interest income and we've, uh, um, we had expected that and it was part of our budget. Um, the net interest margin um, holds up quite well at 1.49%, uh, um, slightly lower but still in, in line with previous periods. Um, and um, we had an um, increase in net fee and investment income but the largest part of our income base is net interest. So all in all, um, the total income was, uh, in including results on uh, financial instruments, 20% lower. Adjusted for the one-offs, 8%. Um, also in line with our budget, uh, we've seen an increase of operating expenses, partly due to regulatory levies, um, we expect full year regulatory levies to be around 46 million and 28 of those 46 for the full year have been booked in the first half. Um, the operating expenses excluding regulatory levies increased by 18 million plus 7%, um, mainly due to the cost to facilitate the increased mortgage production, improve the operational effectiveness and control framework and to comply with supervisory and regulatory framework after the um, um, the, the, the split off um, out of the former holding company. Um, this trend was already visible in the second half of 2015. We do expect, uh, however, that the increase of the operating expenses will come to an end. Uh, we've reached the cost level which is necessary to maintain the independent bank organization we have and from now on, but we'll say a few words about that later, we have to start focusing on adjusting the cost base to the income uh, base, which is a continued process. Um, this would, these two um, developments, lower income, higher expenses, would have had a strong impact on the net result. Um, however, um, we saw a net release of the loan provisioning in the first half of this year. Um, we do believe that this net release is in itself exceptional, it's high. Um, the reason behind it is a huge improvement of the overall quality of the retail mortgage portfolio. Um, we do see a strong drop in uh, the number of uh, loans in arrears. Um, it's only 2% now of our gross loans. And um, um, even when um, we have to execute 
our mortgage rights um, due to the improvement of the housing prices, the expected losses work out to be substantially lower than we had initially provisioned for. Um, we are happy with these developments, first of all, because less clients um, have problems paying back their mortgages, um, uh, interest on mortgages and the redemptions. And of course, it then also has a positive impact on our provisioning level. So this is really a reflection of the strength of the Dutch mortgage market and our position in that market. Um, because it, it combines, we combine it with um, a growth of our market share. And it's also fair to say that we have improved our internal processes um, substantially. Um, we take proactive um, action if and when clients um, are not able to pay on time and the timelines between those moments of non-payment and moments of action have been reduced substantially. So um, it's the improvement of the Dutch economy, uh, the development of housing prices, um, the fact that uh, loans in arrears have dropped substantially and that we have improved our services, which has led to this exceptional number of uh, releases in, in loan provisioning. But of course, um, it helps the net profit. We did have already a strong capital um, uh, structure and that capital structure has further improved. Um, total capital uh, ratio end of June is 30.8 fully phased in 30.31.3, um, leverage ratio 4.8, fully phased in 4.9, uh, very, very strong uh, capital ratios and an average risk weighted assets on our portfolio of 18.6. Um, we are very well positioned to meet the MREL TLEC requirements. Um, at this point in time, uh, the MREL percentage stands at 7.9%. However, it's um, important to realize that um, the, the final institution-specific MREL is expected to be set by the regulator at the end of this year. Um, that will come with an appropriate transitional period um, and it will also come with clear definitions on whether unsecured liabilities are, will be eligible to MREL or not, which, as you know, is um, still under discussion. I won't say much about liquidity. Um, the liquidity continues to stay strong. Um, it's logical that if we look at the development of the real time mortgage portfolio, um, our loan to deposit um, ratio uh, stands at 101%. Um, it won't be um, a financial issue as such if we would get to 100, but we have an objective to keep it uh, well above the 100%. And we do expect, given certain changes in the balance sheet, that during the course of the next, uh, the second half of 2016, um, a slight increase of this loan to deposit ratio um, will, um, will happen. The outlook for the second half of the year. The low interest rate environment will continue to impact the mortgage market. Um, there's fierce competition, interest rate levels are low, um, redemption levels stay high, and um, this all will have, um, in combination with the preference for longer term uh, interest fixed rate mortgages, impact uh, the pricing and the size of our portfolio. So uh, we expect a further drop of interest income. We don't expect, as of the level in the first half of this year, a uh, structural increase of our cost base. Um, and we do um, expect a, a return to, a, albeit low level of um, uh, loan loss provisioning, but that level will certainly be substantially below the 10 uh, basis points of gross outstanding loans. Um, of course, we will press ahead with the implementation of our strategic plan um, by improving our operational efficiency. Um, 
lower interest and increase of expenses lead to lower operating results. There's a trend in the industry that this will continue and we will have to adjust our cost base to, um, to, to cope with this trend. Um, we have, um, um, will um, attack this um, challenge by having a constant look at where we can improve the effectiveness and efficiency of our processes uh, that won't come with a large um, uh, top-down program but with numerous in initiatives at different departments to um, adjust um, our cost base and, and the operational efficiency uh, to the trend of um, lower interest income. So that is a continuous element of the execution of our strategic plan. Next to that, we continue to uh, um, uh, strengthen uh, our identity. Um, we will, um, during the course of this second half year, introduce clear targets and objectives and promises of what exactly that means. Um, and we will focus on timely technical innovations. Digitalization is obviously one of those elements, but we also want to make use of uh, fintech innovations in order to improve the way we have the relationship with our clients. Um, and that all comes with a continued commitment to translate our vision um, on a people-oriented social and sustainable bank and translate it into useful products and services and improve our uh, customer satisfaction levels. Um, well, then you see a page with key takeaways. Uh, you can read them yourself, so I don't want to dwell on that anymore. And I would like to open the floor for discussions. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will start the question and answer session. May you have a question, please press star 1. Your questions will be answered in the order that they are received. First question is from Robin van den Broek, Medio Banca. Go ahead, please. Uh, yes, good morning. Thank you for taking my question. Uh, you mentioned in, uh, during your presentation that you expect volume growth to pick up uh, over the next year, basically. Uh, simultaneously, you're saying there's a uh, you know, pretty fierce competition from pension funds and insurance companies. Um, how are you expecting to achieve that without being um, yeah, competitive on pricing? Because I would also argue that due to the lower deposit rates and analysis, the incentives to redeem more is probably also bigger, so that, that's, that seems like a challenging objective. Uh, secondly, um, could you um, quantify or isolate the impact of these early refinancing options you're offering to clients uh, in the NII drop year on year? And thirdly, in the past you've been pretty um, yeah, outspoken on what your expectations or what your internal study shows on, on what we can expect on output, output floors for risk densities on mortgages in the Netherlands. Uh, can we get an update on that, please? Thank you. Yes, thank you for your questions. Um, we agree that the, uh, co the commercial objectives are uh, challenging, um, but we're comfortable that we can uh, realize them. Uh, already for the sixth consecutive half year, we have uh, seen a growth in mortgage production. Um, it's fair to say that um, in 2013, that level was extremely low due to the uh, problems uh, the company had in those days coping with uh, the capital constraints. Um, we have been able over the last few years to do three different things. We've restored um, our capital base, which has led to one of the best um, capitalized retail banks in Europe. Uh, secondly, we've rebuilt our operational capabilities because they were uh, sized down tremendously. Um, and thirdly, we have um, regained um, commercial, um, uh, let's say, energy in the organization. Um, and that goes pretty far um, within the brands BLG Wonen, Regiobank and SNS. Uh, and we're also uh, considering options now for our fourth brand, ASN Bank, to enter into the mortgage market. So it's not a matter of 
um, buying market share by just being the lowest in the market. It's, it's a combination of the strong capital base, the, the rebuilding of the operational capabilities, um, and uh, the, the commercial uh, successes we have um, we've uh, seen. Um, and uh, we expect those um, developments to continue, and hence we expect our market, our market share in new production to continue to grow. Um, the exact impact of um, 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 the proactive approach of clients to reduce their uh, mortgage rates, I don't know, but you can safely assume it's several tens of millions. Um, and um, it will be a shift in time because the negative impact is more sensible on the short term but as it builds the longer term relationships, um, our projections show that, it, that we will see a, a growth of interest income in uh, 2019 and 2020. So especially in 1617, uh, we will continue to see uh, the lowering of interest expenses. And that's also the reason why we have to um, constantly look at the representative cost base. In terms of output REA, uh, um, uh, risk-weighted assets, um, BAL 3, 3.5 three is expected to set its standards in December um, this year. The BAL steering committee is expected to um, uh, meet in January. Um, the standards will be, then be approved. Um, Subsequently, those standards will have to be uh, approved by the European Union and translated into either cross-European legislation or into national legislation. Um, uh, we've, had a, we've made a quantitative impact analysis and um, retail mortgages only. Um, we do expect at this moment, as a base case, an increase to 36%. But that is that 36 percent comes with um, a lot of uncertainties um, we do think um, looking at the quality of the dutch retail mortgage portfolio that that increase is on the high side um, but that's what we take into consideration into our long-term capital projections at the mo at the moment you asked for an update and uh, we use that percentage okay um, and maybe a follow-up on NII, because you are saying that volume should rise uh, implicitly, your in your, explicitly in your guidance, you also say uh, NII pressure is here to stay, yeah. uh, but that assumes a lower margin going forward. Is that predominantly driven by lower mortgage margins, or what are the main factors driving that lower mm. margin? Um, the, the main component of our net interest margin, of course, is uh, um, the margin between um, uh, our mortgage portfolio and the saving rates. Um, maturities on those assets and liabilities differ hugely. We have to manage uh, the interest rate risk that comes with that portfolio. We do that by keeping the duration of our equity very low, uh, around two years. And the hedges that we have to, um, uh, to, uh, to execute in order to keep um, that, mature, that duration low, they cost uh, they're costly, um, but it reduces the risk profile. So uh, the cost in itself are not an issue. But with the current low interest rate environment, um, those um, um, uh, hedge actions uh, have a ne negative impact on uh, on the on the, ma the margin, and we do expect a further lowering of that margin compared to the level that we have at the moment. That's in our budget, um, and and then it co of course also is aggravated by um, the fact that uh, clients redeem uh, mortgages at a higher speed than in the past. Um, so your your models assumed a prepayment percentage that was lower than what we actually envisage, and that of course has a negative impact on your net interest margin. 
from a client perspective, this is great because uh, they take advantage of the lower interest rate environment, but it has an impact on, on the banks. And where we can and where it's in the interest of the client, we offer proactively um, a, um, a new interest rate uh, a period. Um, and, and that has also, and, but that's more of a timing issue, a short-term impact on the interest income. And that's where we expect on the long term, um, not only because we build the relationship, but also from a net interest income to benefit from. But yeah, you have to go through the first phase of that negative impact. Okay, that's very clear. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have a question, please press star one. Go ahead, please. There are no further questions. Please continue. Okay. Uh, thank you for calling in um, and uh, looking forward to uh, either meet you on an individual basis or speak to you again at the presentation of our full year numbers in February next year. Thank you very much and good morning.